Okay, we left off with oxygen and magnesium dating, but we're talking about chemistry. And one of the most important things <clears throat> that a biologist wants to think about when they're thinking about atoms is the way atoms create the molecules of life, right? And in order to understand that, we need to understand the way the number of protons dictates the number of electrons and the number of electrons dictates the way <clears throat> an element behaves. So let's look at these uh, four elements in front of us, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Um, we're, we are going to be discussing uh, the arrangement of their electrons in what are called orbitals. So electrons do not just zip around the outside kind of randomly, um, but the electrons that every atom has are organized into very specific regions that are called electron shells. Now, uh, for biology, we really are only thinking about very small molecules. So biologists, when we're thinking about chemistry, we just think about those first three electron shells. So don't generalize what I'm saying about all of the elements. It's just these ones that we're talking about, okay? So if, if an element, an atom, has an atomic number of one, how many protons does it have? One. If it's got one proton, it has one positive charge. In order to have no net charge, it needs to have one electron because plus one, minus one, cancel each other out. Whenever there is, write this down, whenever there is an equal number of electrons and protons, then that atom or molecule will have no net charge, right? So when we're thinking about the way atoms behave, we're gonna start with the concept that in general, they will start with having no net charge, right? Now, uh, something else I wanted to point out on this particular image. Um, hydrogen has got an atomic number of one, so it has one electron when there is no net charge, and it is going to zoom around in what we call the first electron shell. The first electron shell, it has got the capability of holding two electrons. After it gets filled with two electrons, then it's filled. And then if an atom is an atom like carbon with an atomic number of six, and it needs six electrons, um, it will put the first two in the first electron shell and the other four, one, two, three, four, will go into the second electron shell. Now, the outer electron shells for these tiny uh, elements that we're talking about, they can hold a maximum of eight electrons. When they are filled, then we've got to push the electrons into the third electron shell, okay? So let's just look at these guys. By the way, um, I guess like 99% of uh, living things are made out of these four elements, believe it or not. Um, hydrogen with an atomic number of one, so it has got one electron in its only electron shell and one vacancy, right? A place that could hold an electron. Carbon's got an atomic number six, it's got six protons, so it's got six electrons when it has no charge. Two in the first shell, four in the second shell. So it has four electrons in the second electron shell and four vacancies. Nitrogen has got five electrons in the outer shell, three vacancies. Oxygen has got six electrons in the outer shell, two vacancies, all right? Let's do magnesium. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12. By the way, if it's got an atomic number of 12, does that tell us how many neutrons it has? No, and I don't expect you to know how many neutrons different elements have. Um, I do expect you to be able to say, oh, magnesium, if I tell you it's got an atomic number of 12, and I tell you it's got 12 neutrons, you should be able to tell me its atomic mass, which would be 24, right? All right, one of the things you need to do on exam one is tell me how many electrons are in the outer electron shell of this particular element, all right? If I tell you it's got an atomic number of 12 and it has no net charge, 
Then it's got 12 protons, so it has 12 electrons. So we're going to put the first two in the first electron shell. Now it is full. So we're going to put the next ones in the second electron shell. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that electron shell is op is full. So, but we still got two more electrons to put. So a third electron shell, one, two, now we're good. So how many electrons are in the outer electron shell of this particular atom? Two. How many vacancies are in its outer shell? Six. Okay. So go ahead, practice for yourself, practice helium, neon, whatever. Okay. And remember that the atomic number and the mass number are two different numbers. You need to be able to calculate them. You don't need to memorize them off the periodic table. So what's the atomic number of this element? It's got 13 protons, so its atomic number is 13. What is its mass number? 13 plus 12, 25. You should be able to do that. Now, let's look at this. This is also an element with an atomic number of 13. So whatever that element is, and I don't know it, aluminum? Anyway, whatever it is, uh, I don't know it off the top of my head. You don't need to either. Uh, but you do need to know that this atom and this atom, they are the same element, right? 13 protons, 13 protons, they are the same element. But they're not the same atom because this one does not have an atomic number of 25. This one's got an atomic number of 27. That means that this is an isotope of that other atom. So isotopes, isotope is the word used to describe uh, atoms of the same element that have different number of neutrons, therefore they've got different mass numbers. Okay, isotopes are atoms with the same atomic number but different mass numbers. Why do they have different mass numbers? Because they have a different number of neutrons. Now, new, different number of neutrons and becoming an isotope, you might be thinking, oh, does that mean they're radioactive? You know what, not always. Uh, it's true that radioactive substances very typically are isotopes, at least for the small ones, but you can be an isotope and not be radioactive. Also, um, it is our convention that, that the version of the element, the, the most typical mass number of the element, we kind of refer to that as the element, and we refer to something that's slightly different as the isotope, but that's just kind of by convention. For example, um, on planet Earth, carbon-12 is like uh, almost all of the carbon is carbon-12. And so we have a tendency to refer to carbon-13 as the isotope, okay? Let's talk a little bit about a hydrogen ion. What is a hydrogen ion? Oh, did we talk about ions? Well, let's talk about ions. Um, whenever an atom or a molecule has got the same number of electrons as it has protons, then that atom or molecule has no net charge, okay? If something has no net charge, no net charge, it's because it's got the same number of electrons and protons, okay? How, net. However, if it has an extra electron, one more than it has protons, or if it's missing, an electron, then it does have a net charge, okay? If something has a net charge, it will become an ion, an ion, right? Ions that are positively charged get called cations. Ions that are negatively charged get called anions. For this particular class, I don't need you to know that. I do need you to know that something is an ion. Okay, so this is a hydrogen atom. What is a hydrogen ion? A hydrogen ion would be if this atom either picked up an electron, so it had an extra one, or it lost an electron. Now the truth is that hydrogen has a tendency to lose that electron. And when hydrogen loses an electron, it becomes a hydrogen ion. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, and so it has one proton. It'll have one electron when it has no charge. 
But when it loses its, its electron, then what is it? It's, it's just a proton, right? A hydrogen ion is just a proton. Now, the reason that I am bothering to tell you this is because it confused me for the longest time. You are going to be reading in your textbook that something is H plus or something is a proton or something is a hydrogen, hydrogen ion. And all three of these, same things, okay? A hydrogen ion, a proton, and H plus, all the same things, right? Because when a hydrogen atom loses its electron, it becomes H plus. H, because it's a hydrogen, plus, because now it has a charge of plus one. And what is a hydrogen? It's a hydrogen atom would be a proton with an electron. A hydrogen ion is just a naked proton. And this is how we spell it out. We call it hydrogen ion. So that's on exam one. Do not get it wrong. And the reason I'm telling you about hydrogen ions is so that we can talk about acids and bases and the pH scale. Right? Acids, bases, and the pH scale, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about it. OK, we'll start it now. Okay. Um, Let's talk about acids and bases. Now, I'm a biologist, and like most biologists, I am very sloppy when I discuss chemistry. Bad habit, OK? Uh, biologists have a tendency to describe a solution with an acid pH as being an acid, but it's not, OK? Acids technically are chemical compounds that when you put them particularly into water, they will release a hydrogen ion. What's a hydrogen ion? It's a hydrogen atom that's lost its electron. It is a proton, okay? So acids are molecules, chemical compounds, that when you put them into solution, and biologists were thinking about water, they will release hydrogen ions. Hydrochloric acid is a good example of that, right? HCl, hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid, when you put it in water, it pops apart and it will pop apart into a, a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. The chloride keeps the extra electron, so it's negatively charged. And then we have got hydrochloric acid has donated a hydrogen ion into that solution. And when you put acid chemicals into a solution, the whole solution generally will become more acidic. A base, a base technically accepts hydrogen ions. It steals, sorry, steals hydrogen ions from a solution, all right? But um, I usually think of them as supplying extra OH minuses. So if I had lye, which is sodium hydroxide, and if I put it into water, it pops apart into a sodium and a hydroxide, okay? So donating. Now, the pH scale, cancel, stop. The pH scale, goes from 0 to 14, and we will start there at the beginning of our next lecture.